Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Innovative Economy, where we discover the future of money, markets, and payments, and how to thrive with the new disruptive technology. I'm here today with our special guest, David Schwartz, who is a Litecoin specialist. He is the project director for Litecoin Foundation, a nonprofit organization created to promote education, awareness, and adoption of Litecoin, a decentralized cryptocurrency. And David is also co-founder and CEO of Cornerstone Global Management, providing a revolutionary product called CP3, allowing employees around the world to have any portion of their pay automatically converted into cryptocurrency and sent directly to their wallet of choice. Please welcome David Schwartz. Hi, David. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm real excited to ask you a question about Litecoin Foundation. So mm -hmm. what do you do over there? Yeah, so for the foundation, I'm the project director, which, you know, interesting enough, uh, started out about 10, you know, about 14 months ago, sort of more as uh, like a, a herder of cats on the, on the foundation because it was only about, oh, a year and a half to two years old at the time, about a year and a half probably. And, um, you know, they're still getting their, their footing in a space where cryptocurrency itself is really young and so the foundation was set up really just to promote um, the cryptocurrency which is decentralized which means that nobody really is in control of it uh, there's no central point of failure you know all those great things that make decentralized a, a hot topic word right now in in the blockchain and cryptocurrency world so what i do it's sort of morphed from herder of cats into um, still organizing some things for the foundation, but also taking on a lot of business development and partnership type of, uh, of roles, which uh, I really, I really enjoy a lot. So that's sort of ended up being probably more like 85% of my work. Wow. And so how is Litecoin different than Ethereum or Bitcoin? So it's not too far off from Bitcoin. Um, but it basically used uh, Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin, used the Bitcoin um, protocol and just sort of morphed it to using um, a different uh, hashing algorithm. Uh, so that's the, that's the um, computational mathematical equations that are used uh, to solve uh, uh, to solve. Um, Making, uh, you know, when we have the, the, the rewards for Bitcoin, you know, how uh, when yeah. a miner gets the rewards for it, uh, it uses a different hashing algorithm, which means it's not competing with Bitcoin. So it's, it's four times as many. So there's 81 or 84 million versus 21 million with okay. Bitcoin. Um, it's technically four times as fast. Um, but it also doesn't compete with it. So it's the easiest and closest thing you're gonna to get to Bitcoin without being Bitcoin. And so we're able to utilize a lot of the same updates and, and other things as Bitcoin does as well, which makes it very efficient. It's different in by Ethereum, simply because Ethereum uh, really seems to thrive in the space where people are able to build projects on top of it. Right, so Ethereum would be considered like a layer one, and then anything that gets put on top of that is layer two. Whereas Litecoin and Bitcoin are more like layer one, right? Okay. Now, you'll you'll be able to build things on them, but they're really meant more as like a currency uh, and for payments than it is like what Ethereum is being built for or has been built for. Okay, and so uh, the largest exchange, Coinbase. Yeah. Uh, the top three that they they trade or allow people to buy is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So Litecoin's the top three. Yeah, uh, yeah. You um, you would yes on Coinbase definitely. Um, in if you were to take like market cap, which people tend to use to decide what the top three, four, or five, ten are, um, it lands at about number six right uh, like one okay. does but okay. 
Um, that's simply because um, market cap can be a bit misleading. Well, lights went off. Market cap can be a bit misleading, but it's really sort of um, Where'd you more go, of an David? Indi- <laughs> <laughs> the lights went off. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, they're motion sensors. You have to move around every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. So uh, market cap is a bit misleading because you're talking about the amount of coins or tokens multiply then by obviously the value amount, which doesn't necessarily equate to actual usage. It's really a lot of the volume right now is either, um, uh, you know, bots on, on exchanges or it's just a lot of trading because it's a very speculative um, ecosystem still. And so if you were to pair off all of the, you know, the, the washing and the bot trading and the, the trading in general, and if you just look at actual usage, um, your top three would be Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So that's really the way I like to look at it. I don't necessarily put too much stock into the market cap part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so where do you see the future of Litecoin? I see the future of Litecoin being in uh, global payments. So um, the goal, yeah, the goal for the foundation is to educate, promote, and foster adoption of Litecoin in everyday uh, transactions like buying a cup of coffee, you know, purchasing things at Target, um, so on and so forth. We believe that Bitcoin will end up being a, uh, uh, such a valuable asset like gold that people aren't going to necessarily want to use it for those types of transactions. Hence, you need something else. So it's the reason we call Litecoin's, you know, the silver to Bitcoin's gold because silver was used a lot more for coins. It's valuable, yet it was still not as valuable as gold. And so a lot of civilizations utilize that for their coins. Yeah. Well, good. And uh, the value of it has gone uh, how much is Litecoin today? You know? So currently it's at around 40. $40. Uh, we've been going through a, about a two year bear market and which is healthy because if you go out and you zoom out to the full life of the cryptocurrency space in general, and if you take like Bitcoin for an example and you look at the trajectory, it's still on course um, overall for a, tra- a trajectory that's gonna take it much higher than its current valuation, which is at about $7,100. So right. Litecoin's, Litecoin's on that same trajectory, but it's about three years behind. I see. I see. And so uh, right now, are there particular wallets where people can purchase Litecoin through a wallet? Yeah, you can get it on pretty much every major wallet um, that's out there, minus probably just one or two, uh, which makes it highly liquid, which is a good thing. That means there's, uh, there's a lot of people that are actually either holding it or using it um, versus some of the other coins. So I think some of the more popular wallets that have been around for a while, you know, if you're looking at uh, maybe Exodus or Coinbase has their own wallets uh, you know, in, within the system and a few others, um, those are pretty popular. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And so what do you, um, what are some of the requirements to join the Litecoin Foundation? So the foundation is based, um, based off of a very small uh, board of directors. There's like three or four of them. And then there are only three really like, uh, uh, well, we're not full time, but we're, we're functional directors or operational directors. And uh, we work basically part time, uh, at least uh, as funding goes. But we have over 100, probably 100 and something volunteers globally. Um, what usually ends up happening is because the foundation isn't the coin, we really try and make sure people understand that uh, if they're a part of the foundation, that's great. You know, usually there's like a vetting process for that. But if they're not, it's really not that, there's, it's not that bad of a thing because we're talking about a decentralized cryptocurrency that anybody can contribute to. And so we really try and reach out to our community of supporters and tell them if you, you know, if you want to do things, you don't have to be a part of the foundation to do that. You can just simply do them. You don't have to ask for anybody's permission to. So we have a lot of people who go around and just do things because they strongly believe in in Litecoin as a currency and they'll go into businesses, they'll 
create like these little uh, planting seed cards that they'll plant all over and like subways or, or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And they'll just do that on their own time and their own money, which is amazing. Yeah, that's good. Well, and so uh, then Litecoin is a public blockchain. Correct. It's on the public blockchain. Yep. And um, so tell me about your latest project with Cornerstone. Yeah, so working working with the foundation for the last couple of years, myself and a, and a couple other people, we, we always try and talk about what are some of the, the roadblocks to mainstream adoption, like mass adoption. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a friend of mine uh, and I, his name is John Kim, um, he also works with, uh, with Charlie, uh, Charlie Lee, the creator, and we sort of came up with this idea through uh, some discussion with a guy I know in the Netherlands, his name's Arthur, um, to create a company that will allow people to take their pay, their regular pay in dollars or whatever it is, and have it sent to an account that will automatically convert it into you know, whatever cryptocurrency that they're looking to convert it into, and then automatically send it to the wallets that they want them to go to. And the idea is, Exchanges are still used in the background, right? Because you have to get the cryptos from somewhere, but you don't have to, as the person, go physically to these exchanges uh, online and actually purchase them yourself and then move them physically yourself or manually from, like, say, Coinbase to the wallet that you want it to go to. And you would have to do each one of them. Maybe if you wanted to go to two or three different wallets, you'd have to do each one of them individually. So what this program does is um, you just basically set up a second direct deposit with your, with your employer. You have uh, the dollars sent to that account. Um, prior to that payday, you go on to our system and you just say, I'd like to have $200 um, sent to this account. I want 100 of it to go to Bitcoin, 50 of it to go to Ethereum, and 50 of it to go to Litecoin. And then within each of those cryptocurrencies, you can then break it down even more and say, I want that hundred dollars of Bitcoin to go to these four wallets, 25 to each, you know, the Litecoin goes to one wallet and the Ethereum goes to these other two wallets and you hit save, you can get out of there. And then when payday comes, um, that $200 is going to automatically go to that account. It'll get converted into those cryptos and sent to all those wallets that you were designated ahead of time. Wow. And so you're, so Cornerstone basically acts like a merchant. Similar yeah, we're good. We're, we're kind of like that plumbing. We, I, the way I like to say is um, if you were to have a, a bathroom sink and you have plumbing in the house, but you don't have the pipe that goes from the sink to the plumbing, we're like that, that piping that goes from the sink to the plumbing. Okay. That's really all we are. Yeah. Well, that's good. That, that will definitely help uh, mainstream uh, cryptos. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. We're going to start, um, start of February. We'll go live. And we'll go live in the United States, and also it'll be available in Southeast Asia. So, yeah, and we'll just spread globally um, through those two main points. And and so here's a question for our I know our listeners have is why would somebody want to convert their dollars into cryptocurrency? Well, so we look at uh, a lot of us look at uh, cryptocurrency sort of being as a hedge towards the dollar or towards other um, fiat currencies, you know, sovereign currencies, um, simply because it's probably not sustainable. If you look back in the history, a lot of different attempts at um, uh, finances or currencies through a sovereign state fail. Um, a lot of that has to do with there's no accountability, really to any degree. And when we got rid of the gold standard in 71, the United States did, we pretty much wiped out any accountability in that respect. And so why not hedge? Um, just like people do with gold and real estate, you can hedge with cryptocurrencies as well. And this is a nice way to do it without having to put too much effort into it. And it's a nice clean way for people who might be new to the space to do it as well. It feel just like when they do it with anything else, like a 401k. Yeah. It's just another option. Yeah. Diversification. Yeah, and there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of merchants and other people who are now accepting it for payment, yeah. which means you could also send it to a wallet or say like a crypto debit card, and start setting up automatic payments through your cryptocurrencies as well. Because when you do right. that, you're not you're not um, divulging your personal information then anymore. 
on those crypto yeah. cards. So it's it's a great you know great intermediary. Right, and uh, it also helps with spending in in other countries as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, people can send money back and forth instant, almost instantly, and it's going to cost a, a mere fraction of what they would normally pay. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So the fees are low. Well, let me ask you this question, which uh, a lot of people, um, what do you think? Do you think the word cryptocurrency scares people? I think it, it invokes uh, a feeling of uncertainty. And I know fear is maybe necessarily the right question, uh, the right word. And, and, and I say that because in mainstream media, you get like spurts of information on Bitcoin. And it's usually only when it's going up or down or someone got caught doing something bad with it. Otherwise, you really don't hear too much about it. And that's sad because there are a lot of great things um, that uh, decentralized cryptocurrencies do. Um, and, and, if you don't hear about those, you know, how are you supposed to have any other feeling than one of uncertainty because, you know, blockchain, the word can either scare somebody or excite somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Once you start reading into that uh, or distributed ledger, um, until you educate yourself a little bit about it, you're probably going to have some sort of feeling of uncertainty. I don't know if, if fear would be the correct word unless it's someone who's only heard things about how it was used for, uh, human trafficking or something like that, which everything is. Yeah, that that's what the news is saying. It's illegal, basically, or it's used for illegal transactions. Yeah, well, everything's used for illegal transactions. So it's funny how they always try and single out, you know, Bitcoin or, or whatever for that. But yeah. yeah. Well, um, so would you say uh, a coin, uh, any kind of, uh, I know there's about 2,500 altcoins right now, maybe more, um, alternative coins. And is that the same thing as cryptocurrency? Some would like you to think. <laughs> yeah. Some would like you to think that they're cryptocurrencies when in reality they're pretty much more like uh, uh, one of those Chuck E. Cheese tokens. <laughs> um, so if you... you and I, and, I, and I don't mean that in uh, necessarily a demeaning fashion. It's more like if you take the concept of what the Chuck E. Cheese token was used for, mm -hmm. which was you put your money into a, a slot, it gave you, it spit out all these coins. Those coins were worth the value of whatever you put in, and they're right. able to take those coins and put them into machines for goods and services or just yeah. for the fun of it, right? And then you yeah. either did or didn't get something back in return, and that's really what those tokens are like. And so to call them cryptocurrencies, to me, a cryptocurrency really qualifies as one that's uh, decentralized. Um, it was not necessarily pre-mined ahead of time, which means you don't have somebody, a central entity that, you know, if you mine 20 million um, coins and, you know, maybe over time, but they immediately mined five or 10 million, keep them for themselves. And then they slowly push those out for the general public to consume. That to me is not necessarily a cryptocurrency. And there has to be some kind of cryptographic uh, element to it as well. But I find that um, those that are decentralized and that there isn't a central point of failure or a central point of who's controlling it, those tend to meet more of the checkoff points of being a cryptocurrency than others. So applicability, um, origin, who's in control, uh, things like that. Those, to me, they all have to be taken uh, into account when you consider what a cryptocurrency is. Yeah. And so is there something our listeners could look at in order to determine whether it's a, a legitimate altcoin or alternative coin? If some, let's say they're approached, hey, buy this coin, uh, what makes it, or what's the check and balance, or do you, besides? Well, so, on, yeah, unfortunately, it's a pretty wide open space still, right? So some of those right. definitions take time to, to be solidified, but I would say normally 
you can find some websites that are pretty in-depth into each of those. I mean, you can obviously Wikipedia a certain, you know, cryptocurrency or whatever too, but really the information that's put in there is coming from, you know, where's it coming from necessarily, right? Well, yeah. So um, <laughs> you got to, you really have to stick to technicals, which can be hard for a new person, right? Um, right. The easiest thing that we usually tell everybody, and this is even, uh, and even Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin, will tell you, when you get in the cryptocurrency space, if you're thinking about it, the first thing you need to do is buy Bitcoin. Buy some Bitcoin first, and then you can start learning about the rest of them. Right. And just take your time. There's no, there's no hurry. People want to try and make you feel like uh, you're going to lose out on some great, incredible bull run that's going to happen or whatever else. But this is the fourth phase that Bitcoin's been through. Um, since its existence. So, I mean, it goes in these ebbs and flows and they're fairly scheduled, which is amazing. But like I said, it follows that trajectory since the beginning. Um, and so if the trajectory is just simply to go up over time, whenever you get in is a good time. So you don't have to feel like you're missing out on something necessarily. You just need to get some of it. Yeah. And you should be that way with all of your all of your cryptocurrency investments. And I would just be very careful. I really only hold three, um, potentially four, but it just, I don't feel like you have to have, you know, a hundred of them in order to feel like you're playing your space correctly. Because in reality, over time, just like with the uh, dot com boom, the majority of those companies went bust, right? Right. Unfortunately, a majority of these are also at some point going to either disappear or they're just going to be existing because, you know, um, they're, they're decentralized and there's no way of shutting it off, but nobody's really using them that much. So they're just going to be kind of floating out there. Right. Right. Now you said that, uh, just to go back, Bitcoin has had, is in its fourth phase. Uh, and the trajectory is to go up. What do you mean by it's in its fourth phase? Yeah, so since it's, uh, its inception, it goes through these, these market cycles. So this is sort of like the fourth market cycle that it's going through. Uh, like I said earlier, we're in, in about a two-year uh, bear market right now for the space in general. Right. So if anybody was around in 2017 and you heard about Bitcoin, it was because it was going through the roof. Right. It went from, a, you know, at the start of the year, it was probably somewhere around $1,000. And by the time December of 2017 came, it hit just under 20000 That's a heck of a trajectory for, you know, return on investment in one year, right? Right. It just doesn't happen that way. Um, but then immediately thereafter, that next year, it, it, by December of 18, you're talking about it's all the way down to 3100 again. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's it's doubled, uh, more than doubled, but it's like this slow uphill climb again, and it, yeah. it just it goes through that cycle. So it's usually like a two year period where it kind of like dies off, and then there's a two year period where it starts revving back up again, and then it goes it goes parabolic. Yeah. So yeah, we're nearing the second half of that four year phase. So I would anticipate 2020 and 2021 showing an increase in value uh, in Bitcoin and, and a lot of other cryptocurrencies. And so does Litecoin follow Bitcoin in, when, yeah. it goes, when Bitcoin goes up? Is it yeah, they're pretty close. They're pretty close related simply because the tech is pretty close related. Mm -hmm. um, and um, sometimes uh, Litecoin will basically lead the charge though too on the, on the bull run. Yep. So some people watch Litecoin as the indicator versus Bitcoin. Um, and yeah, I think usually it's somewhere about anywhere between one to one and a half percent the value of a Bitcoin. Oh, that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And so do you have anything that you'd like to share with our listeners on how they can thrive in the new, uh, in this new technology? Yeah, uh, I, I think one of the greatest terms, it probably gets used quite a bit, but I would never trust, always verify, which means you do your own homework. Don't think you know a lot about it, even after, you know, a lot of people are still learning after six years, following it, seven years. It's just, it's a learning, it's a learning experience like no other. 
But in order to do that, you really have to try and understand some of the terminology that's used. And you always start with Bitcoin. Try and figure out what Bitcoin is. Not just Bitcoin is a currency, but really figure out what Bitcoin is as an instrument in today's society before you start investing in anything. Because what that's, what that's going to do is it's going to cause you to use that as your baseline when you start reading about any other cryptocurrency. And from there, you can figure out, okay, is this really solving a problem like Bitcoin is, or is it just someone creating a problem that can be solved with what they created? That's a good point. <laughs> That's a real good point. Yeah, so sometimes they're not flashy. Litecoin is definitely not flashy, but it has yeah. a lot of relevance because the, the, technolo the technological aspect of it and the fact that it solves problems is a big deal. And um, I've told other people before, uh, think of like uh, there are a few sports athletes in history where they, they really just don't, they're not flashy, right? They, they're very, very good at what they do. Like Walter Payton from the Bears, he was an incredible runner, a uh, great running back. But every time he would score, he would simply walk over to the, to the referee and he would hand him the ball like he was expecting to be in the end zone. And then he, that's it, right? Whereas today you have a lot of people, very flashy, it's all about me, they're up in the camera. Um, after just making a tackle. So Litecoin is, is like Walter Payton. It's going to expect to be in the end zone. And it's going to expect to do what it's supposed to, and it's just going to hand the ball over to the referee. So if you're looking for flash, that's one thing. If you're looking for something that's going to work, that's another. So Litecoin solves problems. Litecoin solves problems. And it's here to stay. Yes, I would like to yeah. think so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I thank you for joining us today. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share or offer to our listeners? Yeah, sure. If they'd like to learn more about Litecoin, you can visit uh, Litecoin. It's L-I-T-E-C-O-I-N, litecoin-foundation.org um, to learn more. Or you can go to litecoin.com. And then uh, if you're interested in learning uh, how to get some of your pay converted um, to cryptocurrency, it doesn't matter what amount, um, you can go to cornerstoneglobalmgt.com. Excellent. And we'll provide the links underneath the interview as well. Uh, Excellent. Everybody. So, well, I really thank you for joining us today. Boy, you've given us some good information about Litecoin and cornerstone and well everybody thank you for joining us today and uh david you have a good rest of the day and thanks you too it was my pleasure well thank you so much and everybody have a great day thanks for tuning in bye-bye